Ford Motor Company is the second largest producer of glass in North America. Much of the architectural glass you see in contemporary buildings, such as this one, was made by Ford. Ford also supplies automotive glass to Chrysler, Mazda, and BMW. Being a leader in modern glass technology helped us achieve the contemporary design of the new Lincoln Continental. Let me introduce Linda Hurd. She'll represent the glass division. Linda, tell us about the contributions of glass to the design of the 1988 Continental. Well, it's a key element. Ford uses glass not just to enhance the contemporary look, but to improve aerodynamic efficiency. To do this, we must shape the glass as well as the sheet metal. You mean the glass and the metal flow together? Right. We don't just design a car and put windows in it. The glass in the 1988 Continental is highly advanced. For instance, the Continental windshield is the most complex design ever produced by the glass division. Come on back here. The backlight is also complex. It takes state-of-the-art equipment to press the glass into these shapes. Over here, the rear compartment side glass and quarter window contribute to the luxurious limousine style. The quarter windows are modular in design. What does that mean? The window is encapsulated in a plastic frame for flush mounting. It's neat and stylish. The flush side glass is an essential part of the sleek, highly aerodynamic design. By bringing the glass out to within two millimeters of the sheet metal, the slipstream flows smoothly past, minimizing turbulence, which creates drag. Drag wastes fuel. In addition, less turbulence lowers wind noise. A quiet interior allows normal conversation and creates a calmer driving environment. Flush side glass is something you'll find on Continental, but not in one of Continental's major competitors, Cadillac Seville. And the windshield and backlight are also flush. Glass is a major contributor to Continental's remarkable 0.35 coefficient of drag. In addition to the aerodynamic shape, is there anything special about the windshield? Yes. Compared to the previous model, it's thinner. Today's glass technology permits us to make each of the two sheets of glass only 70 thousandths of an inch thick. That must save a little weight. About six pounds, which is another way to maximize performance and minimize fuel consumption. I guess it all adds up. I notice there's a black edging around the windshield. And the side quarter window and backlight. It's ceramic paint fired right into the glass. Is it primarily for appearance? Not really, but it is a contemporary styling touch. So what purpose does it serve? First, it blocks out the sun from reaching the urethane adhesive used in installing the glass. Second, it acts as a sight shield for improved appearance. And third, it permits very thin moldings instead of wide chrome ones, again for contemporary styling. Can you tell us a little about the optional InstaClear windshield? Certainly. It, too, is a benefit of advanced technology. We've tested this windshield in cold rooms. It can remove one-tenth inch of frost at zero degrees Fahrenheit in from two to three minutes. Think of the time-saving convenience. Under the same conditions, it takes from 13 to 15 minutes to defrost a windshield with a conventional hot air system. So glass is a key part of the basic design of the new Continental. Both for contemporary style and improved function. Advanced glass technology is another area of Lincoln Mercury product leadership. And Continental's got it. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Contemporary luxury car, like the new 1988 Lincoln Continental, needs a responsive, driver-oriented powertrain. And it has one. Here to tell us about the Continental's powertrain is Craig Calicut. Craig, now, the power plant is a 3.8-liter V6, right? Right, but it's vastly improved over last year's engine. The fuel delivery system has been changed from throttle body injection using two fuel injectors to multi-port fuel injection, with a fuel injector located near the intake port of each cylinder. EEC-4, of course, meters the fuel and changes the spark timing for optimum performance. 
in virtually every driving condition. Now those are two of the reasons why combustion is more complete for better performance and better fuel economy. What are some other benefits? Well, the ability to prevent vapor lock and some of the problems with hot engine start. The intake manifold also has a new two-piece tuned length runner for better breathing which means more oxygen airflow for more power. And the fast burn cylinder head extracts more power and has improved cooling. The compression ratio has been raised from 8.65 to 1 to 9 to 1. The benefit? Well, the higher the compression, the more power you can develop. But with higher compression, do you need a premium grade fuel? No. With a 9 to 1 compression ratio, this engine runs smoothly on regular unleaded fuel. Low tension piston rings are new for the 3.8 liter V6. The decrease in friction against the cylinder walls preserves power that might otherwise be lost. A new increased capacity two-piece oil pump has been added. Now this improves oil output for good lubrication and improved seating. And a single counter-rotating balance shaft has been added for exceptionally smooth operation. Now there are other refinements, but these are the major ones. How much does all this raise the power of the engine? Well, the 1987 engine developed 120 horsepower at 3,600 RPM and 205 foot-pounds of torque at 1,600 RPMs. Well, that was fine for the Cougar. But the new Continental needs more power for exciting performance, and it has it. This re-engineered 3.8-liter EFI V6 develops 140 horsepower at 3,800 RPM and 215 foot-pounds of torque at 2,200 RPM. That's 16.6% more horsepower than last year's engine. And 5% more torque. High torque and low RPM means lively acceleration. And what about the AXOD transaxle? Well, it was selected because it's an ideal power teammate. It's a four-speed automatic transaxle. It has wide ratio gearing and an electrically controlled converter bypass clutch in third and fourth gears for better fuel economy and performance. The AXOD has been beefed up to transmit the higher torque of the 3.8 liter engine. For instance, it has a wider chain drive. The bands and clutches have greater hydraulic pressure to prevent slippage. And the torque converter clutch has higher oil pressure and a larger application surface, also to prevent slippage. To enhance performance, the chain sprockets have been revised to provide new overall torque ratio in all gears. Hydraulic controls that determine shift speeds and smoothness have been redesigned to establish excellent shifting. And it has automatic over temperature protection. The new transmission temperature switch signals the EEC4 computer if the temperature is running hot. EEC4 applies the converter clutch to eliminate hydraulic slippage, cooling the unit down. That has to provide Continental buyers with one of the best powertrains Lincoln Mercury has ever produced and one of the most technologically advanced. To me, much of the beauty of the new Continental is right there under the hood. It's the kind of beauty you can't see, but you sure can feel it under your foot. Traditional luxury cars suggest a soft, plush ride. Many people want that. The contemporary luxury road car suggests a stiffer, more controlled ride. Many people want that. The question is, can people have it both ways in one car? Speaking for Ford, here is Harry Carlson. What about it, Harry? Is it possible to combine a plush, soft ride with a stiffer, more controlled ride? Well, Lowell, until recently, you could only get one or the other. To combine them was to compromise one for the other. Is today's technological revolution in automotive design changing that? Oh, dramatically. We've seen it particularly in the previous Lincoln Continental model, but nothing approaching what the 1988 Continental has to offer. 
I personally feel that this is the most sophisticated production luxury car suspension in the world. The new Continental suspension is called Computer Controlled Adaptive Air Suspension. Can you tell us what it is, how it works, and what it means to the owner? What it is, is a suspension that can shift from a soft ride to a firm ride when needed, and which keeps the car level. It's built on a unique platform. It's what we call the FL, which stands for Front Wheel Drive Luxury. It has fully independent four-wheel suspension, and at each corner of the car is a true McPherson strut. Oh, incidentally, the front struts are mounted to the body of the car through a high-precision ball bearing for a smooth pivot and a rubber mount system to isolate shock and road noise. And the rear suspension has counterbalancing torsion springs, the first known application of its type in the world, Lowell. It frees the suspension of binding and friction and permits a world-class luxury car ride. But let's get back to the dual damping air suspension components. Each is a shock absorbing strut, gas pressurized to enhance its function. An electronic actuator mounted on each strut can switch the damping of the shock absorber from soft to firm. The struts also contain integral variable rate air springs to level the ride. The heart, or more appropriately brain, that operates both suspension functions is a new electronic controller. It's quite similar to the EEC-4, both in its microprocessor and its overall electronic sophistication. Continental has new electronic height sensors. They have their own electronic logic in order to detect and define a number of special leveling conditions. Other sensors monitor the ignition, doors, and brakes. And many other sensors provide input to the computer control module. Okay, that's what it is in terms of high-tech equipment. Now, how does it work? Well, the air suspension leveling occurs when the height sensors detect a condition affecting the attitude of the car. The control module receives this information and controls an air compressor and air valves to change the pressure in the individual air springs to level the car. This compensates for changing weight of the passengers and luggage. Input from sensors monitoring ignition, doors, and brakes permit the control module to ignore momentary changes in level. The new multiple height sensor logic plus greater memory in the control module allow the new system to add two new functions. The first of these is cloverleaf logic. It neutralizes unwanted leveling in long turns, such as on a freeway cloverleaf. And snowbank logic defines additional height positions. If the front of the vehicle is hung up on a parking block or a snowbank, the height sensor can, in effect, size it up. And the system raises the front end so you can back away. That's really a sophisticated system. Yes, it is, Lowell. This new ability to maintain constant suspension heights is what made the low bumper fascia, air dam, and wheelhouse design possible. How does the dual damping system work? The control module processes the information in microseconds and switches the dual damping from a soft luxury ride to a firm, high control ride. You get the control you need instantly when you accelerate quickly, stop suddenly, hit a bump, or turn hard or quickly. In addition, the new height sensor detects an undulating road surface. The computer switches the shocks to firm to minimize grounding out on a railroad crossing or dips. And the control module offers greatly expanded system diagnostics. Now, I realize that you've touched on some of the benefits, but what does this system mean to the buyer? Well, I'll try to translate each feature into its primary benefit, Lowell. The air springs provide a traditional luxury car ride in a contemporary design. The leveling feature ensures consistent suspension travel for all load distributions. This means maximum ride comfort and consistent handling. A level car means level headlamp aim and you don't have to keep readjusting the rearview mirror. And a level car provides consistent aerodynamics. The dual damping feature provides an optimum luxury ride for both soft and firm high control conditions. No compromise. Right, no compromise. The best of both worlds, Lowell. Thank you, Harry. The 1988 Continental's dual damping air suspension provides a whole new level 
of luxury. It's called the new speed-sensitive steering system. This remarkable new system was designed expressly for the new 1988 Lincoln Continental. What's so special about it? Let's ask Ruben Yabuka, our spokesman on steering and suspensions. What is the major difference between this new steering system and previous designs, Ruben? Well, the best steering system would be one that made it easy to turn the steering wheel when you parked the car. And one that gave you a good feel of the road when you were driving at highway speeds. The old conventional steering systems can't give you the best of both worlds. If it's designed for optimum road feel, then you'd find that parking takes muscle. On the other hand, if parking is easy, then you'd get very little road feel at highway cruising speeds. So most steering systems are forced to compromise between these two qualities. That's right. Often you'll find that luxury cars lean toward easy parking, and sports sedans and road machines opt for good center feel on the highway. The 1988 Continental system varies the amount of steering effort according to the speed you're driving. So, when you're maneuvering to park, it's very easy to turn the wheel. It's similar to the best example we could think of, a Lincoln Town Car. The amount of effort increases the faster you go so that at 50 miles an hour, you have maximum resistance. The result is a good feel of the road for comfort and control. It's like the superior road feel you experience when you're behind the wheel of a sable. And when you come out of a turn, the steering wheel returns to center easily. And on the straightaway, Continental has excellent center feel. This makes it easy to hold a straight course. How does it work? Well, in addition to the power steering pump, you have several high-tech components. First of all, an electronic speed sensor monitors the speed of the car. Uh, this information is continuously fed to a computer-based module. The computer module adjusts an actuator valve. Uh, this varies the hydraulic flow from the power steering pump to a gear with a two-circuit rotary valve. Uh, this is a patented innovation, by the way. But what does it do for the driver? Well, it continuously varies the power steering assist to provide the ideal steering effort and feel at all vehicle speeds. No compromise? Oh, none. You get the best not only of both worlds, of parking and highway speeds, but of all worlds in between. The ratio between high speed effort and low speed effort is about two to one. So parking effort is half that of full speed steering. Thank you, Ruben. You're welcome. Speed sensitive variable assist power rack and pinion steering. A step ahead of the competition. And it's standard on the 1988 Lincoln Continental. ABS, anti-lock braking system. In the 1985 model year, Lincoln Continental and Mark 7 introduced ABS to lead the industry in North America. But the 1988 Lincoln Continental has anti-lock four-wheel power disc brakes. This is Emmett Capper, who will tell us about Continental's ABS. It's called the TEV system, right, Emmett? Yes, developed by Alfred Tevs. It's a highly sophisticated product of German engineering excellence. The system has four electronic sensors, one at each wheel. Each sends a constant stream of signals to a central microcomputer. In the module, twin microprocessors independently check this information to assure accurate operation. 
the computer compares the speeds of each wheel. If one wheel begins to slow up faster than the other wheels, indicating that it's about to lock up, then the control unit signals the appropriate one of the two hydraulic braking circuits. This then pulses the braking pressure up to 10 times a second to the brake on that wheel. This prevents wheel lock. It's the same process used by jetliners, a series of rapid pulses to a wheel that starts to lock up. What causes a wheel to lock? Simple. The driver brakes too hard for a given road condition. Snow, ice, mud, or a rain slick surface, or even an emergency stop on a dry road. How well does the system work? With ABS, when you hit the brakes hard, you retain vehicle control as you come to a nice straight stop. And not only that, but the stop is from 10 to 40 percent shorter than with a conventional system. And here's still another benefit. Even with the brake pedal down full, you still retain steering control so you can steer around obstacles. So the benefits are straight, sure stops on various road surfaces and the ability to steer around objects even when braking hard. What ABS really boils down to is giving the owner greater confidence in the stopping capability of Continental when facing various road challenges. Well, I think you've given us all a better understanding of ABS. Thank you, Evan. You're quite welcome. Advanced Integrated Circuit Technology is the driving force behind today's electronic revolution taking place deep inside the automobile. The microprocessor chip is the key. Built into an electronic module, it provides the computer power and sophisticated features that a few years ago would have required a computer big enough to fill your entire trunk space. That's just one computer module. There are eight of them standard on the 1988 Lincoln Continental, 12 of them with all the options. In addition, there are seven standard solid state modules, 12 of them with the options added. I'm Lowell James. With me is Kurt Miner, who will explain what basic benefits all this advanced electronic technology brings to buyers. What about it, Kurt? Well, all this technology provides overall improvements in vehicle performance, instrumentation, and convenience and comfort features. Computers are the brains of controlling the engine, transaxle, speed sensitive variable system, steering, air suspension leveling, automatic temperature control, shock damping, anti lock brakes, trip line, brand message center, plus the electric instrument cluster, as well as the audio system. Those are all stand features. That's right. Well, what options in the Continental use the microprocessor technology? Well, the anti-theft system, keyless entry, the programmable memory seats, the electronic compass, and the Ford JBL audio system. And, of course, modules with the highly reliable solid-state logic are used in such features as integrated relay fan controls, intermittent wipers, premium sound amplifier, heated windshield, heated backlight, and so on. Were some improvements made over last year's Continental? Yes, based on what luxury car buyers wanted, according to our consumer research. The electronic instrument cluster, for instance. Now, originally, the speedometer was to be both analog and digital. But our research with luxury car customers indicated that they want clear, easy-to-read numbers. So the Continental has a digital readout. The high-tech multi-gauge is another example of eliminating clutter. Instead of three separate gauges, the customer can punch up temperature, oil pressure, or battery charge one at a time. It's easy to read, and if there's a problem, that gauge automatically will appear on the viewing screen. The trip minder controls have been reduced from 12 buttons to three large switches to make it easy to use. It's very user-friendly. A menu of five trip information features is displayed. A pointer indicates the current display. Select the one you want with push-button ease. The message center was reduced in size and messages simplified. You can check out a number of monitored systems. In addition, system alerts appear automatically if there's a problem. And there are service interval reminders that come up at 7,200 mile intervals. Then there's no doubt that the 1988 Continental is tomorrow's computer-driven car today. All right, but there's still more to the story. 
Not only are there up to 12 computer modules, but three of them form a data communication link, or DCL. Which ones? The microcomputers in the electronic cluster, the message center, and EEC4 engine controller. These computers can talk to each other to share information. This lets the cluster and message center coordinate the display of instrumentation alerts. And the data link also can provide a great deal of information to a service bay diagnostic computer when your car is in the dealership for service. This off-board computer in the dealer's service area talks to the three computers in the DCL to pinpoint conditions, such as those intermittent electrical problems that always seem to disappear when the car comes into the shop. And the result is even more complete service information for a more accurate and quicker diagnosis, which can result in lower cost service and fewer repeat trips. Do any of the other onboard computers provide service diagnostic information? Yes, the speed sensitive variable assist power steering features built in self diagnosis, as does the anti lock brake system. It seems to me that buyers have some reservations concerning the dependability of the computer. Is that a natural distrust of new technology? Well, I'm sure of it. But look at the facts. There are no moving parts in a computer to go wrong. Once the microprocessor chip and other electronic elements are burned in at the manufacturing plant, they're remarkably reliable. Ford electronic instrument clusters, for instance, offer many added features uh, compared to mechanical clusters, yet are just as reliable, according to our owner reports. The electronic cluster modules are tested extensively during manufacturing, separately and in complete systems, in extreme heat and extreme cold, and they can take it. That's the kind of reliability that our customers want. And the warranty reflects this reliability. Right. Warranty coverage on the electrical and electronic components listed in the warranty information booklet is six years or 60,000 miles with no deductible on the electronic climate control, electronic instrument cluster, and message center components. Thank you, Kurt. Without a doubt, the 1988 Lincoln Continental really is tomorrow's car today. The car is computer-driven because we are customer-driven.